I'm Paula Crane, and I have been a League member since 1969, or actually since 1968, uh, officially. Uh, I have been a member of one of four different leagues over the years, and for the last 35 plus years, I've been a member of the League of Women Voters of Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, I first learned about the League when I was an undergraduate at the university, and I had a, was doing a paper on uh, water rights and the history of water, and this was in Arizona in the early 60s. Uh, when they were doing all the work on the Colorado River, work trying to make sure that California was getting some water and the whole political conflict during that time. And I used a paper that had been done by the League, uh, one of their uh, study papers that talked about some of the politics and the history of the river, of the Colorado River and everything during that time. And so that was my first introduction to the League, and then of course shortly after that was when the League did all of the uh, presidential debates, and so everybody, you know, oh yes, I know what the League is, they're the ones that do the President's debates. I had a lot of trouble because I taught in the county next to where I lived and to where there was a League, and, was, um, and I kept saying, well, you know, can't you send somebody to come and explain the issues? I mean, isn't that what the League does? And they kept saying, well, we only do it in, the in, in our home county, um, except for members. After about the third time I called, they said, except for members. So I said, okay, I'm gonna join. So that's how <laughs> I joined the League. Anything. But shortly after we left there, we moved to New Mexico, and one of the first people or person I met was the treasurer of the local League there. And uh, she uh, said, and I said, oh, I, you know, I'm a League member. And we started talking, and she took me to a meeting the next week. And from then on, I have been a league member, uh, an active league member. I did my very first study, actually, in the league in Los Alamos, New Mexico. And it was back when we were studying um, the legislature. It was our legislative study in the early 1970s. And then we did a, a later study on the presidency, and I've done that. and so. My major interest are the governance, and probably have done almost every state and national governance study. Been a, you know, at least on the local level, participated in, in those studies since that time. So that was kind of how I got started in the league. The, we had a local radio station that did a talk show in the morning, and it was everybody listened. They didn't listen to the radio except for those couple of hours of the talk show uh, with um, two local people and people would come in and talk and they'd push activities and the league used to go in and basically talk about ballot measures. You know, Oregon has a lot of ballot measures. And um, either my first or second year in the league, um, one of the uh, older members of uh, our group, who I actually consider my mentor, this was Grace Finney, and some people may remember was very active on the state level on some of the environmental issues. But she said, oh, you can do it. You and I'll do it together. You can go with me. And I just looked at her, be on the radio? <coughs> I don't think I can do that. But uh, she said, yeah, sure you can. And we went and worked it out. And yeah, that was kind of the first time. and so. Since then, I've done a lot more of these kinds of things. I mean, uh, and I've always, you know, if you'd asked me, I said, oh, I would have, uh, each step along the way, I never could have done that. Uh, when I was a state president, I went back to D.C. and participated in a vote by mail uh, <coughs> seminar or workshop or I don't even remember what they called it, which C-SPAN was there. So somewhere in their archives, I on one of the panels <laughs> that uh, they have, you know, talking about vote by mail. So uh, that, you know, these kinds of things I think are important that the League can do. They can help to make you, you know, give you the confidence to go and do all of these things. And each thing I do, I would have, as I said before, if you'd asked me the day before, I would have said, no, I couldn't do that. And yet, I somehow or other went and did it. And
Well, I was the state president from 1997 to 2001, and um, I really, I had been on the state board. I mean, I observed things, and I'd been on the state board as a director for one year. But I wasn't one of those who had been very active on the state level. I'd been very active on the local level because I think that that's, or at least I didn't up until that point, felt that that was where you could be the most effective is on the local level. I will say you can be just as effective on every level wherever you work, but until you take that next step, you don't realize it. And so uh, one of the things that happened um, to me was I became the president, and um, the previous president, um, just basically the day that she, her last day in office, she left the key and left the office, and that was kind of the end of it. And so I walked in the next day very cold, you know, with not a lot of the previous person telling me what I should be doing. Uh, and uh, then I'd been in office about two days, and I got a phone call from the Secretary of State's office saying he'd like to meet the new president. Could I please come over to his office? And I, oh, okay, what, what have I done? What's going on? So I very nicely the next day didn't wear my jeans into the office. I got dressed very, very nicely and went over to the Capitol and met the Secretary of State. Uh, we had a wonderful conversation, and I've worked, this was Phil Kiesling, who was at that time Secretary of State, and we've worked together on a lot of things over the years, and uh, it's been a very pleasant relationship. But I had no idea what I was getting into <laughs> that day. And then about two weeks after that, um, I got a phone call from someone in his office who wanted to come down to Corvallis and talk to me. And I thought, oh no, what's this all about? And at that time, there was some, the League had been very um, involved in the vote by mail legislation. And it had been a bill that was in the legislature that session that did not make it out, it did not pass out. And what the Secretary of State's office had wanted to do was to make it then into an initiative and have the public vote on it. And they came down and what they would talk to me about was whether the League would be involved and whether we could get the League and, and me as the President to be the chief petitioner on this uh, ballot measure. And so I really got involved very early in my presidency in this entire initiative process and I learned a lot about how the state is organized in that way and out encouraging people to sign my petition. We had um, a very detailed um, discussion and almost hair pulling uh, at one of the local at a state board meeting because we were getting down to the, closer to the end and one of the league's principles was that all vote by mail, I mean, that all petitions had to be signed by non-paid petition carriers. Any of the people who were paid were not, you know, and in fact, I, to this day, I ask a petition carrier if they are being paid to carry the petition or whether they're carrying it. And if they're paid, I won't sign it, even if it's one I really approve because I feel that those people who carry the petitions because they really believe in them are doing it for that reason. But we had a discussion, and this was again back in 19, oh, it would have been 98. And at that time, there were some that were being paid and so, some that were being carried by volunteers, and we decided to stand by our principles, which is really great, and if we didn't make it, we didn't make it, but we were going to be an entire volunteer petition drive, and we actually did end up getting more than the signatures we needed, um, and we didn't have a lot th of signatures thrown out, which is what happens with paid petitioners, because they don't know who they're signing. We were much more particular about people who sign them and everything. And we qualified for the ballot, and were on the ballot that year, and actually passed overwhelmingly and uh, had the highest percentage of yes votes in that election. So that was one of the highlights. We kind of monitor the access, whether things are going on properly, the process, and is things being handled properly, does citizens have access to the system or if they come to, to testify, are they treated nicely and, and just whether how the process, whether the league is at a particularly 
hearing testifying or not, just whether things are going right. And so one of the years, uh, a couple of incidents happened when I was the state president and I was on the elevator doing this one day and I had two people were just on the elevator with me and they came up and said, well, what issues are the league watching today? What are you here to testify on and what's going on? So it really made me feel good that I was known there for the league and they wanted to know what was going on. It bothers me or it worries me that there's not the generation, next generation behind us willing to take the leadership roles and step forward and move us into the future. So, yeah. Of course, you know, somebody, when I first became state president and the membership was starting to go down, everybody said, oh, it's going to be the death of the league. We're not going to be into the next century. And we're now, what, 11 years into the next century and we're still here. So I'm hoping that that we are still here for my grandchildren and that things are happening. So it just, you know, made me feel good that these, you know, kind of things, that the league can be in a place and our opinions are known and we're wanted and, you know, getting the phone call from the Secretary of State's office and wanting to meet me and, you know, that the league can be a force.